Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna be starting on a reading vlog that I am so excited about because it's gonna be reading haunted house horror books or thriller books. I think some of these might actually be thrillers, but we're gonna be reading some books that have haunted houses in them. I figured this would be the perfect reading vlog to do in the month of October because it's always around this time of year that I crave books like this that have haunted houses in them. And recently I've noticed that there's a lot of new releases coming out this year with books that have haunted houses in them. I feel like it's a really popular trend in books right now. So I decided to pick three different books that have haunted houses in them to read for this video. Before we do jump into the video though, I do just want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is HelloFresh. Because I know that with crazy fall schedules coming up, it can make dinner time kind of feel like a rut. Maybe you're feeling in a rut creatively with what you can make for dinner, but with HelloFresh, it makes eating so exciting because they have over 40 weekly recipes to choose from. So there's always something new to try with HelloFresh. It's nice because with HelloFresh, you can skip skip that extra trip to the grocery store and you can skip out on all the meal planning and all the tedious things that you have to do because they deliver the ingredients right to your door. You get everything that you need and you're not gonna have any leftover food waste, which is also something that I think is really great about HelloFresh. And they make the cooking process so easy because they include the step-by-step -step directions, which is also really great for somebody like me who finds cooking to be a little bit intimidating because I'm not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to how to make certain meals and how to do certain things. But with HelloFresh, I feel like I get the chance to experiment with so much more food that I never would have tried making on my own because I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But with HelloFresh, I do feel like I know what I'm doing. HelloFresh is great too because it not only takes the hassle out of meal time, but it's also cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% cheaper than getting takeout. And it's great because with HelloFresh, they don't just have you covered for dinner, but you can also add on other snacks and desserts or appetizers. I recently made these one pan pineapple salsa pork tacos with my sister. We ate these for dinner last night. And this is a new recipe that I was trying out with HelloFresh and I absolutely loved it because I'm a huge fan of pineapple, okay? Anything with pineapple, I'm like, yes, sign me up. And I was really excited to try these pork tacos because anytime I've tried the tacos with HelloFresh in the past, they've always been a top favorite of mine. And you just know that HelloFresh is gonna knock it out of the park every single time with the flavor. So you can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code GABBYREADS16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. This offer is for new subscriptions only and it varies by plan across nine boxes. That's code Gabby reads 16 at hellofresh.com for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That is such an incredible deal. So thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get onto the books. I have three books in front of me. The first book is gonna be The Handyman Method by Nick Cutter and Andrew F. Sullivan. This is a book that I am really excited to read because Nick Cutter is the author of The Troop, which is one of my favorite horror books of all time. And this one is about a family who moves into a new house and then they start to notice that cracks are emerging in the foundation of their house and also the foundation of their family. It's a metaphor maybe, I don't know, but we're gonna find out. I'm gonna be reading this one for this video. I'm also gonna be reading A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. And this is one that I'm especially excited about because this is not only a haunted house horror book, but it's about the actual haunting of Hill House. It says this book is the first ever authorized novel to return to the world of Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. And in this story, we follow a completely different set of characters, but it is the same Hill House from Shirley Jackson's original novel, The Haunting of Hill House. So this has me completely intrigued. I'm so excited to be reading this for this video. And then the third and final book that I'm gonna be reading for for this video is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. I'm actually reading this for my book club this month for the book troupe, so I am gonna be doing a live show for this book at the very end of the month. But this is another one that I don't know if this would fall more into the horror or the thriller genre. I'm not totally sure about that, but what I am sure about is that this book also has a haunted house. Most people wouldn't buy an infamous murder house to renovate for fun, but Sarah Slade is not most people. And from my understanding in this book, we're following this woman who's an influencer and she decides to buy this house where these like infamous murders happened and the house may or may not be haunted. So yeah, hopefully these books give me all of the haunted house horror vibes. Let me send you back to about a week ago when I started on the handyman method.
hello! I wanted to give an update because I have started reading The Handyman Method and I am now- I just hit part three of the book and I'm 147 pages in, which I think puts me at just about the halfway mark of the book. And this story so far is just not really what I was expecting it to be. I mean, you know, the whole point of me reading this book for this video is that it's supposed to be like a haunted house or like I thought it was kind of like a haunted house kind of book. And in some ways, I guess it is, but it's also just not really what I thought it would be. Basically, we're following this family. We're following this dad named Trent. And then he has this wife named Rita and this son named Mike. Milo, and him and his wife are just having all kinds of like marital issues lately, like they're just fighting a lot. And they have recently moved into this new build, like it's this new house that they just had built. And so the only like kind of creepy elements with the house so far have been like they're, they're finding some things on the property, like a nest. I don't really understand fully what it is, but there was like this nest that they found, which had these like creepy kind of like broken dolls in the nest. This book has been like difficult to read so far because the dad, Trent, like the main protagonist dude, he is so awful. Like he is just like the absolute worst. And there's like creepy things happening in the story because the dad is obsessed with these videos that are called like the handyman method. And it's like these, I think it's like these YouTube videos that he's watching like tutorials on like how to be a handyman and how to be a man. And they're very like intentionally, I think like toxic masculinity vibes and being like, well, if you don't do this, then you're not a man. Or like, I can tell a lot about a man by the way he does certain things or, you know, it's just like stupid bullshit like that. And it's unclear to me if he's actually watching these videos or if it's just like his stream of consciousness. Like, I don't fully understand what's going on. His son is also really obsessed with this YouTube channel that's called Little Blue. And like, Little Blue is like telling him to do things like through his devices that he watches it on. It's like super creepy, but I don't think it's because of the house or at least I don't, I mean, maybe it is because of the house and then maybe that would make this a haunted house story. But from my understanding, it's more like their devices, like their, the devices that they're watching these like either YouTube videos on or whatever videos, it's like it's affecting them because it's telling them to do things and it's like it's they're watching it and it's personally to them. But so far, I don't know, this book has just felt very random. Like right in the beginning, we get this one scene where Trent goes to like trim his like down under parts, like down there, he trims the hair down there and then he like nicks himself and we get this whole scene where he's just like bleeding and it's like this whole thing. And then it's like him and his wife are having sex and he's like, oh my god, he's like, I accidentally like nicked myself and she's like, oh my god. And then they have sex and then he's like, I feel like we're being watched while we're having sex. And I don't know, it's just so random. The story does really feel random to me so far and I don't really feel connected to these characters because this dad is such an asshole. He's like one of those awful dads to his son that tries to make him feel like he's not man enough or something. Like he'll just be like, oh, if you don't kill that bug, then you're not a man, you're not my son. I'll make you eat it if you don't kill it. You know, <laughs> like he's, he's so cringy. I will also warn you that there's a scene with the turtle in this book like what the heck because Milo the son in this book He has a pet turtle and like there's another there's a violent scene against this poor turtle Like what is it with Nick Cutter dude? Because if you recall in the troop There is an animal abuse kind of scene that involves a turtle in the troop and then in this book There's another like animal abuse scene that involves a turtle I'm like, what is it with Nick Cutter and these turtles dude? So like that was really sad as fuck to read about <laughs> I did not enjoy that. I'm also so just like cringing and like rolling my eyes so hard because this man is literally going up to his wife and saying you don't know how hard it is to be a man bitch please spare me the drama and i love the attitude that rita just like throws back in his face being like oh i'm sorry did you push our son out of your body like give me a fucking break dude and he says things like let's go to the bedroom and i'll show you what kind of man i am like Ugh! disgusting he's disgusting he's the biggest red flag of a man to ever exist but anyways that's uh, my feelings for now. I think I am gonna try to finish this up because it reads very quick. Like that's something I can say that's very positive about this book is that it's been reading so fast. I've just been flying through this book. So I do think this could easily be something that I could finish within one day. But right now I'm probably gonna go and start some dinner. I went to the store earlier today and I got some, you know, some fresh broccoli and like some Alfredo sauce and all this stuff. I think I'm gonna make like a chicken Alfredo with broccoli. That's kind of been like my go-to recently. I've been making that quite often for dinner, but it's because it's so so good. And then I think, you know, maybe tonight me and my sister might watch a movie or something. I just saw that Disney Plus let me know that Haunted Mansion is now streaming on Disney Plus. So I'm like, how perfect would that be to watch for this 
haunted house kind of video, I think that would be perfect. I was a huge fan of the Haunted Mansion when I was a kid, like huge, huge fan of it. It was like one of my favorites. I actually went and saw it in theaters and it like freaking traumatized me because I saw it with my dad and I was probably too young to be seeing that in theaters because I was scared. That Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion movie, oh my God, I loved it. Like I was traumatized at first, but I grew to love it. And it's always been one of my favorite Disney movies. So I've just been so curious to see this Haunted Mansion. Is it a remake? Is it a sequel? I don't even know what it is. So maybe we'll watch that tonight. It's a little bit later in the night and I just finished reading The Handyman Method. There were some aspects of that second half of the book that really surprised me. Like there was something in the plot that happened that I personally did not see coming at all. And I was kind of like, oh shit, like that's an interesting twist. Overall, I don't know what it is about this book. I just felt kind of like meh about it the whole time. You know, after reading the acknowledgements in this book, it's interesting because Nick Cutter kind of talks about how this book was a little bit inspired by The Shining. And it's like, I can definitely see that now that he you know mentioned it because we're just following this guy who's living in this house with his wife and his son and he's like slowly going insane and he's obviously like not the greatest father figure to you know his own son like he's kind of an asshole and so that comparison totally makes sense and I don't know if that makes me appreciate the story more or like not like the story as much because I feel like this is a not as good version of The Shining now but it is interesting too um in the acknowledgments of this book he talked about how this was originally supposed to be a novella and it was only going to be like 5,000 words but then he said the publishers had asked for the story to get more fleshed out and so then they just kept adding to it until it became this book. In some ways now that he said that I feel like I can kind of tell that maybe this was supposed to just be a novella because I do feel like there are so many scenes that just feel so random and kind of like unnecessary but I don't know how I feel about this because I'm kind of torn right now between giving it a two star and a three star but I think I'm leaning a little bit more towards three stars because I do think, you know, I was surprised by one of the different like twists in this book that I thought was kind of interesting. And I also did like, you know, most of the scenes that were written in this like graphic and gory way, like they were so descriptive. And you know, like Nick Cutter is just so good at writing the like body horror and the things that were happening were just, they were truly horrifying and they were really gross and disgusting. Then I also think the ending of this book, I don't know, for me, it just got so cringy and like cliche and like cheesy especially that last little bit i was just like yeah i don't know like it's not doing anything for me i mean i guess you could say this is all a message about how like we spend way too much time on social media and how we're so easily influenced by social media i think that's maybe one of the messages coming through from this book but again i still don't think it's like that strong of a message but earlier tonight me and my sister we did end up watching the new haunted mansion movie and i thought it was so cute like, it's definitely not as good as the original Haunted Mansion. Like, the original Haunted Mansion just has such a special place in my heart. This Haunted Mansion, I thought it was so much fun. I thought the acting was, like, really good. And it was surprising, like, how big the cast was. Like, there was even some cameos that I wasn't expecting. I also thought this movie was so funny. Like, this movie had no right being so funny, especially Owen Wilson. He was just cracking me up throughout most of this movie. So I just had a really great time watching it. Oh my god, especially Tiffany Haddish, too. Oh, Tiffany Haddish was so funny. She's great. I also really liked um, the kind of difference in the plot in this one, you know, because I wasn't sure what I was expecting when I was like, oh, it's another Haunted Mansion. I thought maybe the plot would be very similar, but it was cool because I think the plot for this one was actually really different, and I really liked the direction that this movie went. I also thought there was like 
a lot of heart. Like there was a few scenes that almost made me emotional in this Haunted Mansion movie. It was totally wild. But anyways, yeah, the handyman method was a time. I'm gonna go to bed and I will update you once I've started the next thing. <laughs> Hello, good morning, what's up? I decided to uh, drive down to Bellingham this morning because I was really craving another acai bowl. I was actually just here like not too long ago, like less than a week ago, but the acai bowl place that I go to now, Robex, they ended up sending me a $2 off a bowl coupon code. And so I wanted to use it because I had to use it within a week. And so I'm back um, here at Robex getting another acai bowl. But I wanted to update you because I have started on a haunting on the hill. Gosh, isn't this cover so beautiful? Like every time I see it on the camera in my screen, I'm like, oh my god, it's beautiful. And this is the one, you know, that I was super excited to read for this video because I feel like Hill House is like the ultimate you know, haunted house. So I was like, this is gonna be the perfect book to read for this video. I'm so annoyed with myself because I forgot to bring my fucking AirPods. I'm so stupid. Brought all of my like books in my backpack and I was gonna plan originally to like go down to the beach and just like hang out, but I literally forgot my AirPods. So like, I can't listen to the audiobook while reading the book. And that was kind of the whole point because this audiobook is really good. Okay, this audiobook is freaking fantastic. Can I just say that because I, just got to um, 85 pages into this book and I'm already on chapter 26. Like I cannot believe how short these chapters have been so far. I swear every single chapter is only like a page or maybe two to three pages long. Like they are very short chapters, which I appreciate. And the audiobook is so good because it has all of these like creepy sound effects. There was a moment where she was driving down like a gravelly crunchy road and you could hear the like leaves crunching on the audiobook. And then also like she heard the voice of the this woman and you can hear it sounds like a weird like echoey woman voice on the audiobook and then also one of the characters in this book she likes to sing a lot and there's so much singing on the audiobook like anytime she sings in the part instead of the audiobook narrator just like reading the lyrics it's nice because she actually sings the lyrics so you can like hear her singing which is really cool i don't know the audiobook production is just really well done and so i want to continue listening to this on audio and that's why i'm annoyed at myself that i forgot my stupid airpods Ugh, whatever so i'm probably just gonna sit in my car and listen to it um while following along instead of like going down to the beach today uh i just pulled up to the most like lovely spot by the way like that's it's kind of just like a nice little parking lot area that's kind of close to the awesome spot that I just went to and there's so many just like red trees everywhere like it's so beautiful and it's really looking like fall today but anyways so in this story so far we're following this protagonist named Holly and she has this girlfriend named Nissa is it Nisa Nissa I can't remember how she's pronouncing it. Her and her girlfriend are staying at this like Airbnb and she decides to go and like take a drive one morning and she wakes up at like six in the morning. She goes and takes a drive and she stumbles upon Hill House. She sees Hill House and she just like immediately falls in love with this house. And she doesn't even know if this house is like for sale or if it's like available to rent, but she gets this idea in her head where she's like, I need to go and like rent this house and stay at this house because she's gonna be writing a play. She actually just got this grant where they're gonna be giving her a lot of money to write this play. And so she decides that she wants to use this grant money to rent out Hill House so that her and like her girlfriend and some of their friends can like stay there while they're working on this play together. And the girlfriend's gonna be helping her with the play because the girlfriend is a singer and she's gonna be contributing to like, you know, the music and like the songs and like stuff like that for for the play. So they're all gonna be like working on this together, but I think it's kind of like funny how adamant, like she is, you know, this girl Holly, she just saw Hill House like one time, she just drove by it. And then she's like, I 
need this to be the place. And she's like, I don't care how expensive it is. And it's just like, she just made up her mind this one day that she wanted to rent it out. And now she's so set on it. And so far in the book, like those first 80 pages have just been her getting a tour of Hill House from the owner and like negotiating things so that she can get it rented for like two weeks in the month of October. So she's going to be renting it out from like October 1st through like mid-October. You know, if you're getting a bunch of grant money to write a play, I don't know if that would be a good use of the grant money, but like, who am I to judge? Like, I don't know. So far, the story's going okay. I don't know. It's like, I really love uh, the audiobook. I think the audiobook is fantastic. I think the production of the audiobook is fantastic, but so far, I'm finding both of these characters to be just a little bit like, I don't know. I'm not really connecting with either of the characters with either like Holly or with Nyssa so far. I'm just finding them to be like, okay. I think I actually might just head back to the town where I live because I do have a bunch of library holds that I need to pick up and I might need to stop by the store just to pick up a few essential items. And then maybe I'll just try to find somewhere nice to like sit and read in my car. And so I think we're going to do that. Um, but before I do leave this area, I might actually try to like take some photos in the area because it's so beautiful out here and there's so many red trees everywhere and I just want to take advantage of the trees and maybe take a few pics for Instagram. It's like there's nobody around really in this area so I don't feel like I would be judged if I just got out of my car and just took a bunch of photos right now. I don't need to analyze Every word that comes out is a lie Make you look like you're so ice, ice, ice. You won't make it to the finish line home from being out. It's almost three o'clock in the afternoon now. I ended up going to Rite Aid because I needed to pick up a few essential things like toothpaste and like stuff like that. I also got Fruit Loops because you know, those are essential. And then I went to the library. I picked up a bunch of library holds and then I was just kind of sitting in the parking lot of the library for a little while reading, but I'm home now. And I wanted to update because I'm now just about 200 pages in. I just hit chapter 54, which is at page 202. So I only have about this much left. I'm feeling very meh about this one, which really genuinely makes me sad because this book should be everything. It should be epic. It has the coolest cover I've ever seen and the fact that it takes place at the actual Hill House. Like, why isn't this book just absolutely everything? I think part of the issue I have with this book is that there are a lot of characters being introduced in this book because, you know, it's not just like the two women that are going to be staying in this house. It's like a lot of people who are helping to write and, you know, produce this play that they're working on. And so there's just a lot of characters and I don't really care about a single one of them. I don't care about any of the characters. I mentioned earlier that I thought it was really cool that one of the girls like sings a lot and it started off being pretty cool and now it's just gotten like kind of obnoxious. Like, I don't know, she's just singing like all the time and I'm like, okay, we get it. You can sing and you like singing and she's always like, the acoustics are perfect in here. And like, I get it. I also think it's a little bit repetitive in the way that they keep like something will happen where like they think they'll see something, they'll think they'll hear something, and then they'll just be like, but she said that Hill House isn't haunted. And they'll be like, you have to disclose to somebody that's buying a house if it's haunted. And they're like, but we didn't buy the house, we rented it. So like they didn't have to disclose it to us. And like all this talk about like, is the house haunted? Is it not haunted? It feels a little bit repetitive because I'm like, we know as the reader that Hill House is haunted, you know? So like these conversations just feel so pointless. I also just think the haunted house vibes in general just are not that strong with this. Like, like, I've never once found myself feeling kind of creeped out or like, ooh, something's happening. Like, no, it's all just been very kind of, eh, like, whatever, I don't care. One of the spookiest scenes that we had in this book was, like, a scene where they were trying to figure out if the stain was wine or blood. Like, ooh. Something that I forgot to mention, too, that I meant to let you know about in that first update is that this book takes place after the pandemic, which I also think is really 
you know, interesting and it was a choice made by the author because, you know, they're talking about how they need to keep the cleaning service in this, you know, hill house. Like they need to keep the weekly cleaning service because these people like really need the jobs because especially after like post COVID times, people are really struggling. And so it's been interesting that these characters have experienced the COVID pandemic and they're living in the aftermath of that. I don't know if that was necessarily something that was needed or if it was just to make it feel more like it's taking place during today's times. I feel like that's the only reason why COVID was even included in this book. I don't know though, I think you might enjoy this book more if you're the kind of person who likes reading about plays and like theater and all that, you know, because there is so much talk about these characters like working on this play and writing this play and talking about production and concepts. And like, I personally just don't really care that much. It's not like I'm not really a theater person, but I'm also really just not that much of a theater person, you know, like I just don't care as much as I would like to. I think by far one of the coolest things about this book so far for me has been how cool the audiobook is. I keep saying that, but I wanted to play you a little sample so that you know what I'm talking about. Listen to the sound effects just in this one part. The engine shrieked and she smelled burning rubber as the car, it was a car, she spotted it through the trees, careered around the curve. She turned to run, crying out as her foot caught on a tree root and she fell, hitting the ground full force. Her head pounded as she lay there, winded and stunned by the sudden silence. Gingerly, she extracted her foot from the twisted Do you hear all that? There was not only like car noises of the car like screeching and like getting out of there and then there was the noise of her falling like onto the ground and then after she fell and there was a little bit of silence, you could hear her like heart beating. Like I am really impressed by the quality of this audiobook. It's just unfortunate that I don't care enough about any of these characters and I don't really care about the plot and I don't care about anything but the quality of this audiobook deserves a round of applause like this audiobook is so interesting it's so engaging it's one of my favorite audiobooks that I've listened to in some time but I think the plan for now is that I'm just going to continue listening to this on audio but my sister and I we do have plans this afternoon we want to go out to the mall and we want to hit up you know Chipotle we also have a few things that we're just like kind of looking for so that's going to be happening and I will update you with thoughts once I finish it because I only have a little bit over an hour left of this on audio, so it shouldn't take me too long to finish this one up. It is quite a bit later in the night, it's about 10.30, but I wanted to update you because I have finished A Haunting on the Hill. I was able to go out to Chipotle for dinner tonight with my sister, which was really fun because I haven't been to Chipotle in a while. And even though I've been having some GERD issues, like the usually Mexican food is like one of my biggest triggers, but I was able to get the carnitas tacos because the carnitas are like one of the least seasoned meats, even though I really wanted to get the steak, but like I, I know I can't do it with my acid reflux right now. Like I would be up all night. So I did get the carnitas tacos and those were really good. We got chips and guac. We also ended up going and checking out the spirited Halloween and I was able to get a Halloween costume, which I'm very excited about. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet though, because I need to surprise my Patreon with the troop talk because that's half the reason why I got it was because we're doing a troop talk where we're going to be dressing up and baking together. It's going to be super fun. But anyways, I got home and I just listened to the last 30 minutes of A Haunting on the Hill and like, I'm not even kidding you when I'm saying that the last 30 minutes, I was just kind of like listening to the audiobook and just staring at the wall being like, I don't feel the slightest bit afraid. And that's really annoying because I feel like with a book about a haunted house and especially Hill House specifically, I feel like I should feel some kind of like scare or some kind of like 
eeriness or creepiness and this book gave me none of that. I honestly think um, instead of reading this book I would just recommend the original, The Haunting of Hill House, because I actually do really like this book. It's one of the only classic books that I've ever really enjoyed. And I also would recommend the TV show that's on Netflix, The Haunting of Hill House, that Mike Flanagan created because I think the show is even better than this book, but I do really like the book. I think the, you know, this classic book and the TV show are so different. Like they are very, very different. And so I know that there's a lot of people who don't really like the book as much because the show is just so freaking good. And like, I totally understand that, but I actually really liked the book. And I think the main thing that I liked so much about this book was the vibes that I got from this book because I actually thought it was written so well and it was genuinely so creepy. But unfortunately, I just didn't feel the same way about this. And not to mention, I just didn't care about any of the characters and it was just so dramatic. And like, I don't know, I just wanted to love this and I didn't. I do think the best thing about this book is the audiobook experience. And I do think that that's worth checking out. But honestly, I would just try to see if maybe your library has this audiobook so that you don't have to actually like spend money on it and listen to it because it's not really worth it for the story but like it's a cool experience to hear all of the effort and the sound effects and all of the things that went into making this audiobook. I feel like I would bump up my rating just for the audiobook alone but I think for me this is sadly ugh, it's probably gonna be a two star. Like I would want to give it maybe like a two and a half maybe a three star. There's nothing really that stands out about this story that I could be like yeah I really liked that about it other than the audiobook and I just don't think that that's enough of a reason because if I had read this physically, I probably would have been so bored out of my mind. Still, oh, I'm so sad that two of these books so far have just been so disappointing, such a bummer. I swear that I do like haunted houses in horror books. Like, I don't know what's going on with this year. So I just have the one book left for this video. It's The Stranger Upstairs. I will update you with thoughts once I've started it. I just wanted to update this because I have started on The Stranger Upstairs and I am now about 85 pages into this book. I've started doing some reading sprints on Patreon this morning, so I've just been getting a jump start on this. And so far, this has been pretty interesting. We're following this protagonist in this book named Sarah Slade, and she's not only an influencer, but she's also a therapist. But she's the kind of therapist, you know, that has like completely faked her credentials. Like she's not a real qualified therapist, but it's still something that she's doing. And in this story, uh, her and her husband, they end up buying this house that's called Blackwood House, where there were these murders that happened there. It's kind of like known to be this like creepy haunted house. The neighbors keep saying these creepy things to her where they're like, oh, like you shouldn't have gotten that house. And like, there's there's been like known history there. Like the last guy who went there went crazy. And you know, he said he was hearing things in the attic and just like a whole bunch of creepy things like that. So far to me, this book is reading a bit more like a thriller and not so much like a horror book. Like, I don't know, it definitely has those like horror elements where she keeps like hearing things at night and she keeps thinking she's like hearing little creaks and like noises in the hallway. There is quite a bit of a mystery happening with this character and her sister because like there's something that happened with her sister. We don't really know. All we know is that she had this younger sister and that something had happened with her and she's trying to keep it a secret from like everybody in her life because she's like, if they find out what really happened with my sister, then like it'll ruin my life kind of thing. And so, I don't know, there's more of a mystery to this book than I was expecting because it's not only about like what's the mystery of this house and like what's going on with this house, but there's also a little bit more to it with like this mystery with her sister. And like the character Sarah Slade, I'm finding her to be very entertaining. Like she's just very, she's almost a little bit obnoxious, but I'm finding her to be pretty funny. But I can see how people could get easily annoyed with her because she'll say things like in that first chapter when she's like, maybe it's Maybelline or maybe it's murder. And she's kind of uh, really obsessed with Instagram. She's like, you can feel the Pinterest boards dedicated to excerpts of my book. And she's like, I'm the human equivalent of Instagram. Sarah Slate at fucking service. She says like Instagram is like a band-aid for her and that she like knows that it's toxic, but she like can't stay off of it. And she, she feels like she needs the comments and like the 
the positive comments on her page in order to like function. Like she said, it feeds her. And so she's posting, you know, like in between chapters, we do get some of her little updates on her website. I guess she has a website as well as an Instagram, but she updates on her website, like any renovations that they're doing. And she also kind of updates as she's like learning the history of this house. And there's definitely some people that are taking an issue to the fact that she has bought this murder house and she's kind of trying to, you know, make a profit on it or make, you know, content out of it. And people are like taking an issue and thinking that's weird, which it is, you know, it is kind of weird. You know, it's, you know, people died here, but I don't know. So far it has an interesting vibe. I'm like not obsessed with it, but I'm having fun. Like, I think it's a little bit more lighthearted and funny, at least like the tone of it than I was anticipating, but it still does have that like creepy vibe where you're kind of like, oh, is something in the attic? Is something happening in the attic? Like what's going on? Is there a ghost? Is there a person up there? Like, I don't really know. I don't know the direction that this book is going in and that's what's keeping me invested. I feel like it's a really quick read so far. I'm easily able to, you know, get into it. And I like the character Sarah Slade. Like, yeah, she's a little bit annoying, but I kind of like her so far. So I'm just gonna continue with this. I'm still doing sprints on Patreon. Hello, it's like four o'clock in the afternoon now. I have still been reading The Stranger Upstairs. I got all the way up to page 206 and I'm about 75% of the way through the audiobook right now. I only have about like 70 pages left at this point and I'm feeling such mixed things about this book. There was a plot twist at the end of part one that <laughs> actually really shocked me. Like it really surprised me. I don't know why I didn't see it coming because I feel like in hindsight, looking back on it, I feel like this is something that I should have seen coming, but for some reason I didn't. And so I was just absolutely shocked by that plot twist at the end of part one. But I feel like ever since that part, I've read this much of the book since part one. And I feel like this part of the book has just been kind of slow moving for me. I feel like this book is doing a really great job at introducing a bunch of different mysteries. Cause I've, I've counted, I think, and at this point in time, I think I think there are five different mysteries that you're trying to figure out what the fuck happened and so far at the end of part one we figured out one of the mysteries so like there's still four different things that i'm kind of like waiting on answers for i think this book might be getting a lot of hate because i do think that it's being mismarketed because i would not call this a haunted house book i wouldn't even call this a horror book to be honest i mean the haunted house definitely has some moments in this book and like there are some creepy ish scenes i guess but like it's really not about that because i feel like the haunted house is just kind of like in the background and it's something that's kind of happening on the sidelines of the story but the story's really about this character Sarah Slade and like this mystery of her life and like what happened to her sister and I don't know like there's a lot of different mysteries that you're trying to solve so this definitely reads more like a mystery thriller book it doesn't really read much like a horror at all really liked part one a lot because I was having a lot of fun with Sarah Slade as a character and the book felt really like lighthearted and kind of ridiculous in part one but I feel like ever since part two it's just gotten to be a little bit Bit, like repetitive and it feels like it's dragging. I feel like I should be a little bit more on the edge of my seat for how close I'm getting to being done with this book. I just don't feel like things are as intense as they should be feeling at this point in time with how deep I am into the story. I also am like struggling with how many characters there are in this book because I swear they'll like mention a character and I'll be like, do we know who that is? Or like, is this the first time they're being brought up? Like there are just a lot of characters that I'm trying to keep track of. I am taking, you know, pretty decent notes in my notebook, but I'm still like looking and I'm like, who is that character? So I'm just a little bit confused sometimes, but I do have some predictions going for like what could be happening at the end. So I hope that I'm wrong. Anyways, I think right now my sister and I, we're going to head out and go out to dinner. We're going to go to Chipotle again, which we just went to Chipotle like last week, but Chipotle was so freaking good that I want to go back again. So we're going to Chipotle and then I'm also going to go to Best Buy on the way to Chipotle because I've been considering getting like a desktop monitor for the office, like for my desk in the office, because I do have my laptop and like my laptop has worked great, but I just kind of want something that would be like an actual, you know, desktop monitor computer that I can have in my office that like stays in the office. I just feel like, you know, I've been doing YouTube full time now for about two years and I think it's kind of like funny that 
that I don't actually have a desktop monitor and it's just been something I've been considering getting and so they have this one on display in Best Buy that I want to go and check out just to like see it in person see the size of it and see if that's actually something that I'm looking for before just like ordering something online so we're gonna go take a look at this computer and then after that we're gonna pick up Chipotle I'm definitely going to try and finish this book before the end of the night though so you will definitely hear my final thoughts when I have them so much later in the night. I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear the rain that is outside of this window right now? Because it has been dumping rain tonight and it's been amazing. Me and my sister, we went out to Best Buy. I did not end up purchasing any computers for now because the one that I really like is not on sale right now. I don't know. I was looking at a few different ones and there are some that are currently on sale, but then there's some that aren't. So I feel like I might just wait until Black Friday to see if I can try to get the one that I want on a deal because, you know, I have Capricorn brain and I'm always trying to save money and like I don't ever want to buy anything that I don't really need right now. I don't know. I'm really weird about spending a lot of money. It like It's something that I need to think on for a really long time before I just do things. So I'm going to take some more time to think about it before I make that big of a purchase. But anyways, after getting home, we had our Chipotle. I have finished reading The Stranger Upstairs. And sadly, um, I don't know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending of this book. Ugh, I just don't know. Like This book started off so strong for me and then especially after part two, I just started getting so bored and I really just became a lot less invested, I guess, in like what was going on. I really think, uh, you know, the epilogue of this book just seemed completely pointless. Like, I don't see the reason to have the epilogue at all. And then like, even the way that this book ended, it just felt like it ended very quickly and everything got resolved so quickly. It was just fast. I just could have used so much more from that ending. I just feel very underwhelmed. There were some things about the ending that I definitely for sure saw coming, but then there were also some things about the ending that I didn't necessarily see coming, but I don't know if I loved the way that some of the twists were handled at the end. I don't know. I think this one will for sure make a very good discussion, you know, because this is my book troop pick for the month of October, so I am going to be discussing this book in great detail with spoilers and everything a little bit later this month probably, but I do think this will make a pretty good book for discussion because there is a lot to talk about with this one. I feel like I'm debating anywhere between a two, two and a half star, three star. I don't really know. I feel like I need to take a couple days to just sit on this and really think about how I feel about <laughs> the book as a whole, but I can say that I'm just feeling a little bit underwhelmed by this. I think I expected a little bit more. All right, so that is a wrap on The Haunted House horror vlog. This did not really go as well as I was hoping that it would. I wasn't really expecting to not care for any of these books and it makes me sad because I was hoping that I would find at least one that I really loved and that I could recommend to you. Because I know from this vlog you would probably think that I don't actually really like haunted house horror books but that is not the case because I do have so many different haunted house horror books that I would recommend. I actually did make an entire video about this like a year or two ago now that were haunted house horror book recommendations so I'll have that video linked down below if you it, but I thought I would show you just a few like The Actual Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I would definitely recommend this book over A Haunting on the Hill any day. I just don't think A Haunting on the Hill can live up to what Shirley Jackson did in The Haunting of Hill House. I also personally really love Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I think this is maybe my number one favorite haunted house horror book that I've ever read. It just has the most vibes with The Haunted House. I also, last year, I read Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, and this one also has a really great haunted house. It just is really twisty 
twisty and really weird. There's also Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, which this is another one that has like a haunted house, but it's also kind of like more of a thriller, I think, and it has some horror elements as well. And then even though Mexican Gothic was about like a three star for me, but I still thought I would mention it here because I think I enjoyed Mexican Gothic more than anything that I read for this video, so that's kind of a bummer, but Mexican Gothic is also really great. This one has a lot of historical vibes, but it also just has that really great haunted house element feel to it. And so yeah, I mean, it's a bummer that I didn't find any new favorites in this video. I feel like a lot of the haunted house books that I've been reading that have come out this year have just been super disappointing because I know The Spite House is another one that I read earlier this year and that one was just okay for me. I think I also gave that one about three stars. I just haven't found any haunted house books that have been coming out this year that I've been really obsessed with. I do have the book Starling House on my TBR for this year so I'm hoping to get to this one maybe in the month of October or maybe in November but this is another new release that does include a haunted house apparently so maybe this one will be able to deliver on the haunted house vibes for me but I would love to know though if you've read any of these books I'd love to know what are your thoughts on them you can let me know in the comments I would also love to know if you have any haunted house you know book recommendations for me for books that you think I would actually like I would really appreciate any of those recommendations down below thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.